What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered how to use the Move tool in Affinity Publisher on the iPad? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen, and today we're talking all about the Move tool in Affinity Publisher on the iPad. This video is actually from my course, Intro to Affinity Publisher on the iPad, Making a Mood Board. That course is available on Skillshare and on Gumroad with links in the description. Now, we're going to go talk about the Move tool, but be sure to stay until the end of this video so that you can find out how to get a special discount on that course. Okay, now that we know a little bit about the interface and how to work with our documents, let's go ahead and let's start learning some tools. The first tool that we're going to learn is the move tool. This is the top tool in the toolbar and it's kind of the default tool. It's what you'll use so much of the time when you're in Affinity Publisher. So this tool basically allows you to select objects and deselect objects. So right now I'm selected on this rectangle, but if I want to deselect it, I will just tap somewhere else on the screen. So then it is deselected. So this is kind of the basics of the move tool is you tap on an object and then to move it, you just hold and drag on it and you can move it around the screen. Now I'm noticing there's a little bit of artifacting sometimes when I move, there'll be these lines I get left on the screen for a little bit. I think that has to do maybe with the processing power of my particular iPad or something like that. Those don't remain and they don't export. So don't worry about that if you see it. Now there's a few things to note with the move tool because you will use it a lot. The first one is that there are some different options in the toolbar. And if we just hold down help, we can see what those options are in the middle of the screen. You can see there's move options, arrange, transform, alignment, geometry, and selection target. So these are just useful options to have. We're not going to go into all of them right now, but we will use some of them when we are actually doing the project of this course. So just know that those are the options that come up when you are using the move tool. And of course those change if you're on a different tool. Say I choose this tool right below it this node tool, those options are going to change. Something good to note if you're on another tool and you want to get to the move tool is if you have a keyboard, you just need to hit V on your keyboard and that will change to the move tool. V for move because I think V looks kind of like an arrow. I think that's why that got started. That's a very common keyboard shortcut in most of these programs. When you're using the move tool, you do have some gestures available to you. For example, if I'm using the move tool and I want to move my object around, if I want to hold it in alignment in the same line that it was before, I just hold one finger on the keyboard and now you can see that yellow line appears that holds it in alignment on some different angles. So I can pull down and get to a 45 degree angle or a 90 degree angle, but I can't go off just anywhere I want. It will kind of hold it in line and that is a very, very useful. Another thing with gestures is if you want to duplicate that object, you can hold two fingers on the screen and then drag it. Make sure that you let go with your finger that is holding the object before you let go with your fingers on the screen, otherwise they will not duplicate. If you want to duplicate and hold in alignment, you're just going to hold three fingers on the screen. So with three fingers on the screen, you can see that I can hold it in alignment and I can duplicate it. And when I let go, I now have a duplicate. Most of those options can also be done by using your modifier wheel. So if I hit the modifier wheel and I'm going to drag it to the other side of the screen since I'm left-handed, but if I have the modifier wheel here, I have shift option available to me. That's going to hold it in alignment just like one finger did. But if I want to actually duplicate it, I can go down to option and I can duplicate like that. If I want to always hold it in alignment, I can go ahead and drag past shift and then I don't have to keep my finger there. Shift is just on until I turn it off. So the modifier wheel can be very useful in a situation like this. Another thing to note is that you can of course access the quick menu while you're using the move tool. So just hold down on the screen and you'll get this quick menu option. You have things like copy and cut and paste. You can also duplicate from here. Now one thing that I'm going to do is delete some of these. I don't think that I need all of these rectangles. Now let's talk a little bit about using the move tool to resize things. So if you tap on it and you want to resize it, you're going to use the little handles in the corners or the sides. If you use the corner, you can resize in both directions at the same time. And if you want the proportion to stay the same, hold one finger on the screen. So that's how you can resize in proportion. Now if you use just the sides, you can just go in the horizontal or vertical directions. If you want to rotate, you can use the handle at the top. So the one that's sticking out, 
Just tap on that and you can rotate. To keep this in 15 degree increments, hold one on the screen. If you want to resize from the center, hold two fingers on the screen while resizing. If you want to keep those in proportion while going from the center, hold three fingers on the screen. Four fingers will allow you to rotate from the corner while you are resizing. Okay, I'll undo that with two finger tap. Similarly, of course, we can use the modifier wheel to do some of this resizing. So if we have shift, we can resize in proportion. If we take shift off, we can resize any way we want. If we go to command, we can resize from the center. And we might want to set command so that we can also hold down shift and resize from the center proportionally. This modifier wheel can take a little bit of getting used to, but it's really useful to have, especially if you don't have a keyboard. So that's the basics of the move tool. You can see it's going to be a really useful tool. It's going to be one that you're going to use constantly. So make sure that you get familiar with it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed learning more about Affinity Publisher on the iPad. These tool videos that we're doing are all from my course, Intro to Affinity Publisher on the iPad, which is going to walk you through how to get really comfortable using Affinity Publisher on your iPad. We've never had a professional tool on the iPad like this before, and so it's new to a lot of people. So be sure to check out the links in the description below. If you have a Skillshare subscription, you can go ahead and click the link to the Skillshare course and watch it there. But if you don't have a Skillshare subscription, I still have an option for you because I also have the course listed over on Gumroad. The course is $25 over there, but if you use the special code YT15, you can get it for just $15 because you're coming from YouTube. So make sure to take advantage of that. Check out those and all my other courses in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.